How's it going, guys? I'm so happy you're here. I am Antoine Baya, and my co-host, Tor Hamilton, is on my left here. This is episode four of Pure Muscle Radio, and the guest today, welcome to Chris Tuttle. So what's up, Chris? Hey, what's going on, guys? What's happening? Well, we're just having a little podcast here this morning, and I'm happy to uh, interview you, because the cool thing about these episodes so far that we did is that, you know, it's so easy to interview a friend. It doesn't feel like this is part of my job, but this doesn't feel like working at all. You know, like we hung out like just uh, not long ago and, you know, and Doran, we see each other every day here. So it's like, it's fun to do things with our friends yeah, mixed with the job, I think. So, um, yeah, just another day in the office, I guess. How about you? Yeah. Yeah. Same here, man. I'm very happy, very privileged. Um, I work from home. For those of you who don't know, I work at home, my wife and, you know, clients. We're doing, you know, more. She's doing the the total equity investments. Uh, I'm working on more flavors. Just there's, you know, I'm with HD with you guys. So it's like, this is great. There's just so much going on. Living the lifestyle. Um, even though I don't compete anymore, I'm still live lifestyle every day. Obviously, I still train. Um, train three days a week. Box a little bit. Rollerblade, mountain bike, shoot guns. Just it, that, living the that, life, man. That's the cool thing about being retired. It's like there's sometimes I'm afraid of retiring just because I feel like I'm not done yet. But um, before getting into your retirement, let's just go back a little bit to the beginning. So why did you start training and bodybuilding? You can keep it short if you want. First of all, why don't we show people what Chris looks like right now? This is just a lifestyle. We pull up, pull up, pull up his Instagram to show people, you know, Chris has been retired. How many years have you been retired, Chris? I stopped bodybuilding in May 2020 uh at a body weight of 267 and i'm 209 now 209.6 this morning and this is training how many times a week you're not just doing weight training right you're doing boxing combat. yeah i weight train three days a week boxing twice per week i actually do ballroom dancing once per week and then i leisurely will rollerblade and mountain bike around my, my my house my area um but three days per week though it's like when i go to the gym still got that mentality to train like a bodybuilder even yeah. though I kind of prioritize uh, what I do for weights, like for shoulders, because of boxing, I really don't do a lot of shoulders. So like I will do lateral raises and rear delts and that's really it. High repetition because I don't want to mess my shoulders up and I can't train heavy with boxing because my shoulders just get absolutely annihilated. So yeah. I do full range of motion, slow control repetitions, um, because throwing fast hooks and overhands when my shoulders are beat up from heavy weight, it just, I feel like I'm going to tear a bicep. That's risky. You know? Yeah. And we scroll the way back up. Um, so Chris, you just like dieted a little bit to try and get your body fat levels down. And what was the point of this? Why are you? Yeah. Like yeah so, um, first go, off guys, go, go I that, love prep. Go to that video. Which, which video should we click here? Chris, can you see this? Yeah. Uh, you cannot see this, uh, uh, you but can't see this. it's on his Instagram. Go to the third one down where he's to the side over, over to the left. Abs and thighs. Yeah, right there. Yeah. So they're, Chris, they're showing the abs and thighs. If for those who are just listening, we're on his Instagram. The uh, one that we're doing the side tricep, the side tricep variation. So, yeah, that's so, got a good clip. Yeah, go yeah. back out and the one right below that. Yeah. Right, there yes, you go. yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So front Let's double. The poses. This is like show shape, peak condition. I know. I mean, this is better shape than I a lot told of them, like, pros jump on the stage. plastic or something or 212. For the fuck yeah, of it. This is crazy. Yeah, so like dieting for me is fun. I always liked it. I like preparation. Always hated off season. Um, I do very well with being hungry and tired. I, I like it actually. I think it's a good challenge for one. But for two, the main reason why I got trimmed down is one boxing being lighter. Obviously, you move a hell of a lot faster. You get less tired. And I don't get my ass kicked so much during a sparring match with smaller guys because they know I'm bigger. They know the oxygen robbing muscle is just going to deplete me, and they're going to light me up when I get tired after ninety seconds. You know, um, yeah. and the other is. I send endless video clips of posing changes for my clients. Like, I'm like, no, keep saying, God damn it. Send this, doing this pose wrong. I'm in my bathroom, setting up my camera. Be like, this is what you got to do for side chest. You got to do for side tricep. And I'm like, I'm doing this like 10 times per week. I'm like, I should get shredded and make a posing module editorial and go through every step-by-step -step process of all the poses of basic stuff. Because let's be honest, guys, like, We've all dieted people who are beginner to amateur and some of the most basic fundamentals of posing aren't there uh, outside of individualism from a good posing coach. So instead of them spending $150 an hour to learn how to pose, how to do quarter turns, at least I can cover that gap with all the basics before they go to an advanced 
uh, coach. So that's why I created this. I did a four hour posing session last Thursday and covered every single pose from the feet all the way to the top, broke everything down, transitions, core control, variations of certain poses, why some body types might do this pose versus that pose. And I'm going to put it together into a module and make it available for people um, so they can see it. So how is it going to be available? Is it like an ebook with clickable links or is it going to be? Yeah, a that I haven't decided yet because it's so much information. I have to edit everything. But I was thinking more the lines, honestly, of like a subscription. Like, you know, people log on and they're able to see all the poses and they can see it per month. I can release more new tips, et cetera, over time. That's kind of what I'm leaning towards. Um, and okay. and that, that way it's, it's more usable. But I just, it's a lot of information, you know? Securing. Now it's easy for other, even coaches or other, you know, for me, for example, with my clients, or it's easy to be like, hey, go purchase this from Chris because it's so in-depth, it's so in detail, the amount of value and knowledge you're going to get from that. You know what I mean? Not all coaches have that time to sort of put into posing, right? They're so busy with prepping the client with nutrition and supplements. Sometimes posing is a big element that's sort of overlooked, right? And we all know you can't present what you have. Yeah. And, and one thing I am finding, I'm sure you guys do as well is, I mean, just like the advent of coaching being on the internet and the popularity growing, everybody is a coach, right? So now you have honestly, probably 70% of coaches who really aren't great. <laughs> That's happening with posing coaches. Now people mm -hmm. are helping people pose after doing two shows and advertising this and advertising that. I mean, I I've seen clients of mine learn posing from posing coaches getting charged $90 an hour. And it's wrong because they're just regurgitating exactly what they do. And it's not individualized at all. So I'm like, this is so frustrating. So yeah. I wanted to provide something that is very heavily detailed. Like when I go through the poses and all the mandatories for classic and bodybuilding, like I, I do make it very clear in the poses of showing slight different variations of that pose say for a particular body type, somebody has a long torso, short torso, that way they can educate themselves, understand it and make the decision themselves on what looks best versus just somebody being like, nope, crunch down your abs hard in the front of a bicep, that looks best. Or yeah. stick your butt out and pop your adductors in the rear of a bicep, that looks best. It's like, no, it doesn't for everybody. You know what I mean? Based on your torso, based on your hips, you know what I mean? All yeah. the things, front of a yeah. bicep can be hit three, four different ways, right? Based on the- yeah. Yeah. So awesome. that's the reason why. And I honestly, I'm staying light. Like I was telling Lexi, I'm like, you know, what it is guys. Like when you're lean, you're so productive. Like I'm Sleep's like up better. in the morning. Energy's better. Everything. Yeah. And yeah. like, I don't get tired when I'm on the computer. I'm just like, <laughs> like ripping it. And then the off season, you know, you're eating full calories in a surplus and you're like, yeah. Where do you, know, where, do you where do you think your sort of maintenance calories are? If you want to maintain, you know, this level of body fat, so people know, like, how many calories a day do you think you would need to float around this? You know, it's really funny, Dorian, is like, I don't count calories at all. And this is really fucked up. And I'm, I'm sorry for everybody listening. And then they asked me all this information. I prepped myself for this without writing anything down. Yeah. I didn't write anything down. I just knew I'm doing 50 grams of protein per meal, five meals. I was doing 15 grams of fat for meal one and meal five. And then the, the middle meals were just 10 grams of fat. And then for breakfast, it was 45 grams of carbs, 45 grams of carbs, 30, 30, 30, zero. Uh, no, one, two, three. Yeah. So the last meal of the day was zero. And then 45, 30, 30. And then sometimes on training days, if I felt a little off, I would introduce more intra carbs to help yeah. fuel that training, specifically just around training. And then I would refeed as needed. But when I ref, when I when I did my refeeds, it would just be like, I would add another 500 grams of calorie, uh, 500 calories from carbohydrates broken down through the meals. See my outcome, look at it. I'm like, oh, great. You know, I look better, look harder. I dropped a pound. I'll do another high day. Yep. Weight starts to come up. I look fuller. All right, I'm going to drop back down to my lows. But it was all just in my head as I'm going. Yeah, so you, fast forward to now, my fat grams are up. I added more fat. So I do 20 grams of fat for meal one, 20 grams of fat for meal six. Meal six still has no carbs. And then I'm doing, 15 grams of fat for the first three meal I'm in the middle meals. And then now I'm doing carbs, 75, 75, 75, for the first five. And I just keep it very like when I'm reversing for myself personally, I don't get technical with like pre and post training. I just, I want my glycemic control to be as even as possible as I'm coming out of that deficit. 
And uh, so far, my body weight is really almost exactly the same, within like a pound. Um, and I'm performing better. The fatigue is rinsed off, uh, feeling a little better and better every day. And that's where I'm at. And, 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 like, and I'll probably venture up a little bit more carbohydrates probably next week, maybe 90, 90, 90, 90, and then see how it plays out. And that's kind of how I roll it. I just a couple of days, see how I feel, um, et cetera. I did, a, I did do a little bit of a cheat meal on Saturday, which did nothing to me at all. Train legs on Sunday. Monday was back down to the same weight. But yeah. that's kind of how I roll, man. It's just progression, progression. People get, I, I think, a lot of people, and that's totally fine if that's how they work. They get really covered into the details and numbers where they try to predict where they should be or what they're going to be. And I'll be like, I don't know. I'll just start with right where I'm here, wait 72 hours, see the outcome, make a change, and then do that again, then again, then again. And then five more changes later, I have no idea what the calories are at. I just know what carbs my macros are per meal. Yeah. Yeah. So how many calories is that, you think? 75, 75, 75. One is no. I have to add it all up, right? Yeah. I'm going to add it up. Yeah. Pretty quick, yeah. It's just yeah. calories. I mean, you didn't go crazy. I don't think you hit anywhere under two thousand calories while you were dieting. You know? No, actually, no, I didn't. I did actually look at that at one point. I guess I, at one point, and uh, it was about twenty one hundred calories. Yeah, because um, you were still eating sixty grams of fat alone. So sixty times nine is already yeah. Oh, look, carbs. You, you decrease the carbs a lot, I guess. Yeah, and I and like I don't do well with low fat. Some people are like. They bring fast down to like less than 40 or less than 30. I can't do that. Really? I feel horrible. Yeah. I feel horrible. Like the level of fatigue that I will get on a low fat diet is just horrendous. And it's funny. It's like, even though the calories might be close to the same, if I reverse those macros and brought fat, the facts brought back down the carbs, I feel great. Then all of a sudden you bring the carbs up, bring the fats down. And I'm like the walking dead, dude. Yeah, yeah. That's strange. Why is that? Well, I think your body, you know, it, I don't think it likes to run on low fat, right? I mean, that's why there's essential fats and essential amino acids, right? Mm. Your body actually needs those to live and function for bodily functions, whether it's brain health, your skin, your hair, your nails, everything, right? So I think once you dip, I think anytime you dip below like that 45, 50 grams of fat, you start really, really feeling it, you know? Yeah, you know, you know, you know, it is, uh, Dorian, like a lot of coaches in the industry are like, low as fat as possible, 10 grams a day, just supplement with mega threes and then replace those calories with carbohydrates because that's what's gonna you're gonna need for fuel and all this stuff. Yeah, that works for some. It does not work for me because you know it is if the fatigue's so high, yep. you end up moving less, expending yep. less, exactly. and your training suffers, and then your body just ultimately starts to decline. So there's definitely a, a point where you want the macro breakdown to be where you're able to perform and at least function throughout the day. Yeah, there's no point in lowering your calories so low, like you're saying, like you're not moving, so you're sitting on the couch all day. Now you're not active, you know, and you're just simply burning less calories on a daily basis aside from training. What's really crazy is that Antoine, in uh, the last couple of preps, you know, uh, to support his health and his cholesterol, we had a diet on very high fat. In prior preps, we would go pretty low, and we kept his fats, I would say, till he was like probably three weeks out, like over 100 grams. We were like 110, 120 sometimes. So, and I didn't, I didn't notice, we didn't really notice any difference aside from like, yeah, it was just like, we just manipulated the carbs with low and high days. And he still lost body fat at the same rate from previous years when we pull the fat down. So it's pretty interesting. Yeah, it's it pretty is interesting. And I hate when people put themselves, they pigeonhole themselves into a particular belief of black and white. We all know those people, right? Where it's like, you can't do that. You can't. Uh, yeah, you, you can. It's individual <laughs> response. It might not make sense, but it's yeah. working. So it's working, right? <laughs> really interesting. Gen genetics, in a way, probably played the biggest part. Yeah. And even if you do a certain diet, you if you're going to get lean from a calorie deficit, you're going to get lean anyway. There's the, the just better ways to go around it for you. It's like, for example, a gorilla. It's crazy. A gorilla, the biggest and most muscular primate of all the primates, including us, of course, nine or whatever, 800 pounds of lean muscle, it's lettuce. Only. But how much lettuce does it eat? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, have bet no you, idea. I bet you the damn thing eats so much damn lettuce, it's probably getting more protein than we're getting from just the lettuce. <laughs> well, <laughs> what's, it's so. funny you say that because somebody actually brought that up as an example um, when people try to use animals in comparison to humans where they eat like, I think it was like a ridiculous amount of greens. 
And yeah. obviously their body can synthesize essential amino acids from, from those foods where yeah. our body cannot. Yeah. So yeah. when people make those comparisons, like, yeah. well, a horse grazes all day long and they eat nothing but grass. I'm like, dude, you ain't a horse. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So wait, so it, was it 30 kilogram, Justin, that I saw they eat of lettuce per day? 30 kilograms. So that's like 60 pounds plus for sure. That's a, like, that's I mean, like 70 I that, pounds. I think that would fill this room with lettuce. <laughs> 70 <laughs> pounds of lettuce. Dude, you know those big containers, those like rectangular containers of lettuce like this? They're like $4.99 or $5.99. Yeah. That's like less than a pound. That's like, what am I saying? I think that's like only like 400 grams of lettuce. 400 grams, yeah. No, it's insane. Oh my God. <laughs> so, <laughs> is there enough hours in the day to eat that amount of lettuce? I mean, they have a, You're a gorilla. Big mouth, I guess. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Jesus. Wild. Yeah. Wild. So, yeah. So now that you're all retired, but why did you decide to stop competing? What was the main catalyst of that decision? Um, believe like, it you were or on not, the cuts, but like 212 in the open, right? Because you were like, yeah, I just couldn't, like, when you're younger, when I was younger, I don't want to speak for everybody. When I was younger, I could, I could cut 10, 12 pounds in 24 hours, make weight, and then fill back up again and look good. That's not the case anymore. So, like, I looked, I, I thought I looked my best of all time about 24 hours out from my last pro show um, in 2019, November. I was extremely happy with everything outside of my leg injury, my knee injury, um, but condition, everything's great. And I was 221. And then when I made 212 and then tried to go back up, my body didn't look the same at all. It just all. looks beat up, right? It doesn't have that fresh, full look, right? It didn't get the, I lost all my lines, my hardness, everything. You get that dehydrated, and, pulling out. Yeah. All, it's, you yeah. just, it takes a long time to fill that back up and look, look proper. Yeah. And I'm older now. Like I was able to do that in my twenties. You know, I, I can't do that anymore. Yeah. Um, and then, and then I was like, made the decision to go to open. So I started to uh, work towards that and re reached my highest body weight of 267. Uh, but I, there's a couple of things that it was my own mistake. One, I really didn't stay after to maintain proper function. We all, as bodybuilders, lose function, as in like not proper length tension within joints. Our mechanics become off. We start to get excessive shearing force within the, within the joints. Joints become inflamed. Then you have difficult time training hard or heavy. And then you start favoring other body parts because of an injury and you start compensating and then another injury occurs. I was just getting injured after injury after injury. And it's honestly my own fault looking back where I should have spent a great time, uh, a great more time maintaining proper function, working with corrective exercise to bring myself back because I am stronger now in my lower body and my lower body is bigger now than when I was at 267 and I'm 209. But do you feel like from my experience too, and I've experienced this when I do do these off seasons get really heavy and the body fat goes up, I feel like the inflammation in the body goes up and my training suffers. So it's like our body isn't as efficient because we're trying to eat all these calories and then our training suffering because we're probably like 15, 20 pounds heavier than we really need to be. But we're thinking, oh, off season, we need to eat lots of calories and get big. But it's like, at what point are you like, hey, my body doesn't need this many calories. I don't need to be this heavy right now. Cause I felt like whenever I did push like the heavy weight, my knees would hurt. So my leg training would get sacrificed. My lower back would hurt. So then I couldn't train back properly. And it was like, at what point am I doing myself a huge like disservice, you know, where I would actually be a lot more efficient being lighter and really prioritizing training performance in the off season and just eating, like, you know, just make sure you're eating enough to grow, but not being so heavy, you know? You honestly, I hope everybody listening could re-listen to that a few times. That's a hundred percent accurate. My experience in hindsight, looking at all the mistakes that I made that I that I shouldn't have, that ultimately shortened my lifespan as competing. And you know, everybody has an expiration date in their body, and how they treat their body and how they approach it will greatly determine when the expiration date will be. But one thing that stood out that you just said was. 20 pounds heavier than I need to be, right? And you're hundred percent. You get to a point where that body weight gets up, your mechanics become off due to stomach distension. You're carrying more body fat. So inflammation is definitely higher. Um, you're probably not sleeping quite as well because of how heavy we are, right? We add that. We might not be as insulin sensitive. Appetite's not wonderful. And now cardiovascular wise, training between sets has suffered. Like, I mean, dude, 
I do box, so like I do have way better cardio I've ever had. Like I can do a 30 rep set to failure and leg press and I'm not out of breath at all. And like, I'll get up and do it again and again and again and again. And I have to, in my mind, be like, sparring's way harder than this. I have to take a step back because my muscles are going to be like, what the fuck are you doing? Because yeah. cardiovascular wise, I'm so much better shape being lighter in the boxing. So there's that factor as well. But I agree. It's like, if we hyper-focus on driving training performance and feeding that. Yeah, and recovery. Training performance and recovery. If those are some point. I feel like you're going to have the most productive off season, you know? Yeah. So. And, and, that, and I was going to say, touch on that too, recovery. I train three days a week and people will first say, oh my God, I can't believe you're responding that way in three days a week. I probably am responding that way because it is three days a week. Yeah. It's like, dude, the gear I used for this, this last prep uh, is minuscule. Like everyone no who's more is better, more training, yeah. more gear, dude, more food, no more. trend, no clan. No T3, no fat burners. I didn't use AIs for the last two weeks and just did Anavar and uh, Winstrol combined of 50 milligrams. And prior to that, it was just Masteron and Testosterone, 400 and 400. And that's what I ran. And it's just like, but because I was only doing three days a week, I was recovered every time I would hit chest again. So you got the most out of every training session. Yeah, first Mm -hmm. set, I was like, boom. It was like, Monday's a full rest day. Tuesday is usually just pad work. Um, pad work, speed bag, footwork. And then Thursday would be a little harder pad work, some sparring, a little more aggressive, but it's still not beating my muscles up, right? In my cardiovascular shape. But like, honestly, that cardiovascular conditioning probably helps me recover too, because I'm pushing blood around, circulating things. And I'm just getting all that rest from actual anaerobic training. Um, And not to mention, the other thing I, I think that also contributed to is like, not using any fat burners, my sleep was immaculate the entire time. Yeah, and like, burners, do you mean just caffeine stuff? Well, I drink my coffee in the morning. Oh, I um, mean like uh, like uh, those pills, like back in the days, they would take. So what? No. By fat burners, what do you mean? No fat burners, like no clan, no T three, okay, no okay. hydroxy cut, none, none of that stuff. The only yeah. fat burner I could argue is I drink coffee. So I I normally stick my two cups of coffee. Uh, it's funny breakfast. because even Seriously, even, even with the training volume, how you said, you know, you were training only three times a week, even at like the highest level, Antoine, say prepping for the Mr. Olympia, even with him, I, you know, looking at him, I have to scale him back to make sure he's only training five days a week or his training sessions are under, say, 70 minutes. Because, yeah, you, you were telling me an hour. Yeah, and 60 minutes because even at that level, if he was training too much, he was doing himself a disservice. His body would be empty. He would be beat up. He'd lose all the volume lose all his fullness and he'd start to look like he got ran over by a truck. So when we back off, we'd see everything volumized. The muscle looks a lot healthier. He's getting a little more recovery, right? So if Antoine did it himself, he'd be in the, he'd be in the gym for probably three hours. Yeah. I don't know. I, I tend, I tend to overdo things, you know, that's uh, one of my traits, a little bit of an extremist, but sometimes, uh, especially in prep, I find that my, my perception of myself and what I should do gets twist more and more twisted as the show yeah. comes closer so this is why like i don't think i would be able to um be uh, disciplined enough not disciplined enough no, but di- more disciplined enough to not do as much yeah i know it's like if it was just me i would overdo it oh so my I- gosh you, you'd be doing an hour of cardio two hours of yoga training <laughs> an hour and a half of posing what else would you be doing i don't know skipping skipping yeah i was skipping one year <laughs> yeah. yeah michael but, you know what's that's not even discipline it's just it's uh when you're in prep you're so emotionally charged and focused and driven that you tend to not read the signs your body's telling you yeah, yeah. and especially listen all of us are old school guys here right it's like we've been buried by coaches before in the past like yeah. No cheat meal, no refeed for 18 weeks and two hours of cardio a day with Clen and T3, nothing but fish. Like, we've been there. So two it's lectures, like... And two letters all for eight weeks. <laughs> yeah. So, like, when we're, when we're used to that and we feel horrible and the old mentality is, the worse you feel, the better you look, which we know is bullshit. And it's like, it, that's what we grew up on. So I totally understand Antoine sometimes. It's like... I feel too good today. And you start, start flicking sweet potatoes out the window. I'm like, I'm eating too much. I'm eating too much. Yeah. I got to get rid of this food, you know? Yeah. There he is. Yeah, I remember when the Jose Raymond was uh, prepping me for the 
2011 Arnold Classic Amateurs. It was the first time I got shredded. But I would wake up and it would make me do like 45 minutes on the fucking bike as soon as I could get up. And I would do more cardio later in the day. And I would train for like two hours. And I would eat like white fish, she said. So I would buy tilapia, which is like garbage. I would just only eat that and vegetables and just do all this. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, man. No, I think that some of the stuff I, I did like growing up and then like, just like the newer generation, I think like they think they have it so hard. Mm. And it's like, I'm like, man, you don't even know what we used to yeah. do. You know, like okay. two, two one hour sessions of cardio and just just fish and asparagus all day. No, he's crazy, you know. Not, not to rip in the fir- in the not c- upcoming generation, but I'm going to. It's and <laughs> I, I mean it's not their fault. I mean, I guess it's the society's direction as a whole. Our my era was all about doing the hardest things possible. Yeah. Like it was, it's like, if we were, if we weren't squatting front squatting and walking lunge in the same workout, you're a pussy. It's like, if you, Oh, you're doing the leg press today. You know what I mean? Like that was the mentality. Like when I first started, are you having cheat meals? You can't cheat for 20 weeks. Like yeah, it was always harder. And newer generations is like, what can I do to make this as easy as possible? And then rely on drugs and I'll just do pendulum squat and single leg press and I'll build big quads because Dorian didn't squat. So I don't need to. And yeah. then I can do this and do that and still get shredded. I'll just take more T3. Like yeah. that's the mentality of today. It's like they're, not they're to both going opposite ends of the spectrum. We were like, more is better. Needs to be hardcore. Need to work as hard as possible. Where it really is probably somewhere in the middle. You know what I mean? And they're looking for, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's and nice. that's, listen, guys, who was listening to the new generation, that's not everybody, of course. But I mean, in my experience with helping a lot of uh, newcomers and, and hearing the questions I get on a regular basis through DMs and email and in person, it, it's, it's leaning in that direction. There's no question about that. Um, yeah. And uh, I was going to say one more thing about that. Um, yeah, no, there definitely is a big difference, though, with every sort of generation, right? Things always change, things always evolve. Look, and, at, look at Arnold. It was like you had to train like three hours, three hours a day, twice a day, run yeah, at the beach, yeah. and then he would eat like ground beef and eggs and toast for breakfast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like egg whites and tuna. <laughs> I know. Yeah. So like this, like he thinks that whatever, like yeah, what we were doing was probably crazy. You know. Yeah. 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 It's uh, funny. Uh, uh, Milos, you know, the AMA podcast with Milos. I started asking him because Juji eats everything plain, just yeah. salt and pepper, right? Nothing. So, yeah. yeah. So I'm like, I go, Mills, I got a question for you. Back in the day when the 90s, did you guys like do condiments and all this stuff? He's like, no, everything was changed. It was double boiled chicken. Keep everything as plain. Double boiled? Or, I don't even, I don't even think they use salt. I don't even think they put salt on anything back then. No, that's what he said. He goes, later we figured out when you put salt back. He goes, but we ate everything plain, plain brown rice, boiled chicken, broccoli. I'm like, that's awful. But they did it. They didn't complain. And that's what they did. Now you get people like, you know, I can't believe it's not butter spray, even though it's all fat. And they add salt, pepper, and they're using a whole bottle Flavor of gang. Stubbs Flavor barbecue sauce sauces. today, you know? Yeah. All the Flavor Gang sauces. Oh, yeah. Sauces for every for, for every food item. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. I know. It seems like the whole, whole society got a little bit softer, you know, and uh, I guess more compassionate, which is brings good good things but i find that as far as training goes and to be motivated and I, i'm glad i the people i looked up to were all the those legends of like of our that you know like uh lee priest jay cutler ronnie coleman kevin lavroni all these guys like some of them were already retired but in 2003 when i started like browsing bodybuilding.com forums and the websites and i was like looking like bodybuilding um you know, like a bodybuilder on Google Images, and I would see who would come up. Like back, it wasn't Google back then? It was actually um, Alta, it, uh, Alta Vista. I think it was Alta Vista or something. I don't yeah. remember. But yeah, so I'm glad this is are the guys I was looking up to. And the videos, the only videos I could have was like I would order DVDs of like the Battle for the Olympia, or I would go on like a LimeWire and I would down like download the pirated version of like the videos and stuff and just watch that and get some weird shit in there sometimes like remember that napster and limewire yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> the torrents crazy, the man. torrents the torrent files i know crazy time so i'm glad that i had that as an example you know and not like imagine if you're a young kid you go on tiktok oh so these guys are the famous people 
broccoli haircuts and dingling dingling earrings i'm gonna do that that you sort of aspire to be right is whoever in in that era is leading the way right they're setting the example you know i don't know I, i mean like the first impressive men that i've seen on tv were like stallone and arnold and van damme yeah. my dad was like watch this it's good so i just that, that's, that's what that's what sort of i think inspired us or you know, i know that's why we are the way we are because of the, the heroes and the people we watched growing up you know so i wonder like the dads of today like what would i show my kid hey watch this it's good i think i would i would show it the stuff that i liked right? i mean you, you have to because stuff that's today honestly is straight garbage yeah it, it really is it, it is um do we sound like a bunch of do we sound like yes three, we do three old guys right no, now? We, 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 no 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 but like there's two things right it's like it is true and and i don't like this is that how many questions do you guys get ever when they say hey question for you how long do you think it'll take me to turn pro how long or how long or how much will this take and like I immediately say to them, if you're already looking how long or counting what it's going to require to get there, you're already going to fail. If you came to me and you're like, Chris, I love bodybuilding. I want to be better at it. Uh, my goal is to try to win my first show and then go from there. But I just love it. I just want to make sure I'm doing it right. I want to make more progress. That guy's going to do well. Yeah, like it's like, my- you know, that uh, saying the person that likes walking will walk the furthest than the person who likes destination. And I just will add one more thing before we close this topic about people today having it harder. Dude, the resources available for good information is endless. Listen, when we first started, we were only as good as the guy in our local gym. In our local gym. When I first started bodybuilding, I went to the front desk and I go, hey, I know this gym is a little harder core gym than I'm used to. That's one of the reasons I'm coming here. Is there anybody here that used to compete? I asked the chick at the front desk and she's like, well, that guy used to compete back in the eighties and nineties. His name's Jay. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to go talk to him. Hey, Jay used to compete. My name is Chris. Like, is there any way you can help me get, in, get into competing or knowing like where to, where should I sign up or help me with posing? I'll pay you. And he's like, well, I don't, I, you know, I have a job. I'm like, I know, but like, I'll, I'll give you 60 bucks. If you just help me point me in the right direction. And yeah. then Eventually, I meet somebody from his friend who competes, and I'm just learning from the guys in my own local gym. And they they had no idea what they're doing, not That's looking really back at it. it. Yeah, but like really back then, well, my first show, you know what I did? I because my I was training at the gym that my mom was training at. It was a very commercial gym, so I just went on on the bodybuilding.com. Then I was like, oh, this is like, oh shit, I need to like um diet and stuff. So I. I was reading articles and I think Lane Norton was a so there because he was writing articles back then, back in yeah. stuff. So I was like, I did that and I did my own diet and I showed up to the show and I saw you need a, uh, to have a bronzer tan. So I went to the pharmacy and I bought like this cream that you put and you're, you, you get more uh, tan. So I went up to the show like that and the guy was like, no, 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 that's not it. So like, let, let me help you out. So they actually helped me out and put protein on for my first show because I showed up like, you know, and the thing is, the crazy thing about that, my worst shaving experience ever was right before my first show because, all right, I got to shave my whole body. I had a little bic. Oh! <laughs> you, you know, the first disposable, time you shave, disposable one. it's like, you, you know, when you're yeah. a teenager, you, the, the hairs on your legs are this long yeah, tra- and straight. Yeah, straight. At first. No, I didn't trim it. Oh, man. Disaster. Oh. And, then, and then all the spots I couldn't see, I asked my mom to do it. Oh, that's nice of her. Yeah, she, <laughs> I was 16 years old. Yeah, the, fir- the first... The first thing that I sort of read and got information from was definitely the Arnold uh, Encyclopedia. That thing I just would yeah. to bring with me to the gym. It was the only source of like information on training in depth. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I don't know if people are still reading that thing, but man, for me, like when I was in like grade eight and grade nine, I would just read that thing every day, you know, and write out my workouts, choose exercises from there because he gave pretty good description of everything. Yeah. You still yeah. have it there. I yeah. think I have it too. Really. Yeah. It was a great book. Should bring it here. Yeah. As a prop, the classic. So, how, what was your first show, Chris? And what was like kind of weird about it for you? Like, did you get a lot of help, or you kind of like went there on your own? Okay, so I tried to, you know, you, sometimes you quickly figure out people are full shit. So this dude is just taking my money and telling me what to do, and it just wasn't working. And I'm like, well, you know what? My sister's boyfriend in high school used to bodybuild, and I know he used to compete. So I contacted my sister. I'm like, Beth, do you still have Christian Chuli's phone number? 
She's like, I haven't talked to him in years. I'm like, she's like, I don't think so. I'm like, how do I get a hold of him? And she's like, well, let me find out if I can get his number. I get his number. And I'm like, Chris, it's Chris. Remember me? And he's like, yeah, I remember. He's like, do you still compete? He's like, no, I don't compete anymore. And I'm like, dude, can you help me do a show? And he's like, all right, you know, fucking, I lost like 32 pounds in six weeks. He like died me on like 1200 calories. But, <laughs> yeah, I, I ran test propanate only <laughs> and uh, died like 1200 calories, 30 minutes of cardio, pissed away a bunch of weight, was a crappy middleweight, got fifth out of six people. Um, and that was in 2005 at the. Ah, it's my first year competing too. NPC. New Jersey, I don't remember exactly the name of it. Not the Golson Clash. How old were you? One. 17? What's that? How old were you? Oh, no. I was uh, 22. 22. Wait, so how old are you right now? I'm going to be 40 in a month, dude. Oh, no. Crazy, eh? Wow. Yeah. I mean, 40 is not old by any means. It's not old at all. You know, I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll be 40 like pretty soon. Yeah. Dorian. Um, 30, we'll be 36 this year. Do you know why it's old? It's because remember when we were 20s and we see some dude at a party, you're like, who the fuck's this old dude over here? Is he fucking 40? Yeah. It was like, it was like 30. You know, I'm that guy. And the other day I was talking to my friend. He's like, bro, how was that? Uh, how was that meetup? I'm like, I don't know, man. It's kind of not my crowd, but kind of older folks, kind of like in their mid 40s. And I paused for a second. I'm like, like wait a minute. I'm going to be 40 in like two months. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> <That's hilarious. laughs> That's Oh, it yeah, is but that- how, how fast time starts going by, though, right? As you get ah, older, once you have, up. like, yeah, once you know what 10 years feels like, oh, it just starts going by like crazy, man. Bro, crazy. I, grew, I started to grow my hair out. I'm like, dude, 40 years old, I got to start looking younger. I get all these messages. Did you go to Turkey to get a hair transplant? <laughs> Do you got hair plugs? I'm like, no, man, I just fucking grew my hair out. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I, it didn't work for me. No. Yeah. Yeah. But, dude, I, Antoine, I was like, you, man, the first show, I, I didn't really know, like, he got the, you know, the guy who helped me got me lean, um, obviously crash dieted hard, but I was by myself the day of the show. So I was just watching everybody else. Yeah. And uh, I didn't bring oil. I didn't know. Um, and I put the oil, you know, protein with a brush myself and it was all splotchy. And I remember some big guy back there. He looked really good. And actually Vint, uh, uh, Galante was in that show. He actually won the overall hey. in that show. And, uh, this big guy backstage who won the, super heavyweight come over to me. He's like, Hey kid, this is your first show. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't really know what I'm doing. He's like, all right, dude. This... And he kind of took me under his wing that day. And he's like, listen, pump up around this time when they call this class, did you bring any rice cakes? I'm like, rice cakes. I'm like, no, he's like, come here. He hooked me up with rice cakes, a little salt. He's like, dude, this is do this generally thing. Pump up like this. Do you get oil? I'm like, I don't have oil either. He's like, let me help you out. And then dude, I wish I remembered his name. Um, yeah. but he, he helped me out that day and I felt a little more confident, but, but after that, I was like, dude, I want more, but I want to do this right. And then I bought a bunch of Chris Aceto's championship bodybuilding books, followed his carb cycling principle. And then yeah. the following year I came back 13 pounds heavier and better condition and won. <laughs> nice. That's good improvement. That's yeah. awesome. That's cool. So what, what did you like and not like about competing? You said you liked the diet part. That's obvious, but there's some specific things that you don't miss at all. I don't miss shaving in the tan. That's the worst, dude. Oh, I hate know. it. The hey. tan on your skin. Like, like one of my favorite shows was Europa. And because they spray tan me 45 minutes before I hit the stage. Like I go backstage, tan, dry, oil, on stage, come off. They go rinse off. We'll respray you tomorrow morning for the finals. I'm like, this is great. I don't have to sleep. I'm like sleeping like this and like tans getting all fucked up. And you're looking at yourself in the mirror. You're like, oh my God, am I flattening out? No, your tan just sucks. You know what I mean? Like, I, I hate that. And be honest with you, like, I honestly love the lifestyle, the prep, everything that goes with bodybuilding, actually, other than competing, like being on stage, I've never been like super thrilled to be on stage, like it wasn't my thing. You know what I mean? Like I liked everything else about it. When I used to race motocross, it was the opposite. It was like, I trained for that race and I couldn't wait for that fucking race. You know what I mean? So it's a little different, but I always bodybuild for me. I didn't bodybuild for Instagram or for anybody. I was never a tank top guy, but 
this fucking HD tank top's fucking sick. So I had to <laughs> yeah. rock it. <laughs> well, you gotta you gotta show it when you're when you're in shape, it's like you you need to like you know, it's more it's fun to show it to like did that change yeah. for you though as you got older, like being a tank top guy? Are you like now that you're like getting a little older, are you like, hey, I'm in great fucking shape? I'm gonna enjoy this a little more. Wear tank tops because I know like sometimes like there's that mentality, and I was like that, like growing up, there's this expectation of some some way you're supposed to look or your expectation you have for yourself. So you're not always like wearing a tank top. Did that change as you got older? Um, well, I say it actually changed after I retired. Yeah. And and to be honest with you, one of the reasons why I always covered up and I was bigger is I really didn't. I, I got sick of the negative looks um, and I got sick of the snickering comments. And I honestly just didn't want to be bothered because if I wore a tank top to the grocery store, you know, 50% of the looks are of disgust. You might get a couple slick comments. And then the other is like, Hey man, uh, uh, ooh, uh can I ask you a question? Yeah. Uh, what's the best cycle for gains or what do I do for chest? How many calories should I eat? I don't know. My, I don't want to be bothered. So yeah. like when I downsized, I felt so much better because I felt like I blended in better. And I, and I like, we would all go out to eat with friends who were not in the lifestyle at all uh, of fitness. And instead of like it being like 20 questions about nutrition and training, like, Oh my God, I'm, I'm actually being talked to like I'm a normal person, uh, Yeah, which yeah. was, which was nice. But now I'm okay with wearing a tank top. Like I'm okay with it because I guess you could say I'm more acceptably, like more acceptable size, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I remember when I was 20, I was, I would wear long sleeve at the gym all the time and, and stuff. And then at some point I, I went to the beach and I saw everybody else who didn't care about showing off their bodies. And like, I worked so hard to look a certain way. Why would I just like not accept the way I look and just wear tank tops all the time and whenever I want. So since then, I even if I'm like uh, off season or like in recovery phase of the year, I just I just wear tank tops when I want to. The only time I don't I don't do it as much is when I'm like I get a shave and then my whole back is like gorilla. Yeah, well, I'm not gonna wear a stringer because it's like I, I don't feel comfortable. I think that's my biggest thing after like thinking to myself all the time because I notice anytime I do wear a tank top, I always do like a full shave for my arms because like I'm literally like a gorilla. Like my entire body, there's no like start and finish. From his ankle it's all just, the way up. It just, there's no start and finish. It's just there's no start and finish. It's just full full hair, right? I know. So it's like, and then you look ridiculous. If I just do my arms, it's like I got a distinct line. <laughs> like you know what I mean? So it's a I every week I spend an hour and a half trimming or shaving my body to complete. Oh, you it know when you, when you say like you hated the shaving part of bodybuilding, I'm like, oh, you're so lucky because like you know you probably look like this and you didn't even shave. No, no, like this is my hair hasn't grown back yet. I'm, I'm actually, I've become relatively hairy. I okay. got hair, I got hair going on my ears now, bro. Yeah. Same ears. Same. You know what? You know what I plugged the other day? A, a white hair from my nose. Oh damn! <laughs> I've been doing that for like ten years. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> uh, not too bad. Yeah. So uh, three things I like about competing is the shaving yeah. and that 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 tanning there, and you like the lifestyle and stuff. So. You know, one thing to close that out is one yeah. thing about my personality is I'm, I'm, a, I'm not a flashy person. I don't like attention. And I probably get that from my parents. Like both my parents are very successful. They're both doctors, right? But my, my mom drove a Ford Escort. My dad had a Ford Bronco. Yeah. Like I remember my mom being like, mom, like, mom, why don't you guys get a BMW like so-and-so's dad? And my mom's like, dude, material things are not of necessity. Not to mention Chris, like, Sometimes you don't want to stick out from the group because you could become a target. And my mom grew up in FBI family where they were a target. So like, it's a little different mentality and that she kind of brought that down to me. So like, like, you know, I don't like attention or flashiness. I don't like to stand out. So I think there's some of that psychological when it comes to like tank tops or wearing a certain thing. My wife's like, Oh, wear a tighter shirt. I'm like, no, fuck that. I don't want to wear a tighter shirt. Like, I like, I want to like blend in. Like, and then you walk into a place and people are like, oh, just come from the gym. And I'm like, talking to me. And he's like, yeah, dude, you look huge. I'm like, fuck, that wasn't the point here. I was trying to like yeah. trying to fly on the radar. <laughs> no, to be honest, I don't notice the 
looks anymore, but my fiance Taylor will notice people around me just like looking, making comments and stuff. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's like a, it's like my, you know, like when you're a kid, like there's a lot of things like you, or how can I explain that? You know, that your, your brain will like filter out the stuff that's useless. If it's like really repetitive and not affecting you or whatever, it's like my brain filtered out all the people looking and commenting on the way yeah, I look. Just don't, you it's been so, because cause I've been like, I've been more muscular than the average person since I'm like a kid, I guess, you know? Like yeah, a, forever. Yeah. 16 years old. So it's like, it's always been like normal for you. Normal. And the, the, the comments that I, I, that I get, it's like, um, rare. it's like, sometimes it will be weird. Like I remember, I'll remember that forever. I was with my mom eating breakfast. And this old, I was like wearing a tank top or something, or just a t-shirt that was kind of like with the, my arms were showing. And this old man comes by, he just doesn't say anything. He just grabs my arm. <laughs> and I'm like, me and my mom look at each other. I'm like, they said something. And we, I just, <laughs> and I was like, okie dokie. What was that? Like, that was weird. Imagine if I was like a, a woman. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my gosh you know be in jail i just got back then i got hashtag he too <laughs> that's great i love jokes like that that's what i know great. yeah um i have to say though since since advent of instagram being on instagram and I, I don't care anymore because obviously you guys know the instagram comments people make people are just so stupid and what they say on instagram to try to put you down just makes them makes the makes them exposes them how much of a, a loser they are well, so i become I it, right? yeah i become so thick skinned i don't care anymore what anybody thinks i do anything and wear anything anywhere i don't care anymore but um i, I used to be like i just want to like be left alone but now I'll give two shits sometimes on instagram when i see people commenting negatively i'm like how unhappy do you need to be or miserable could you imagine? actually take the time to write something that negative on someone else's yeah, that you don't even know i've, Crazy. I've never done a negative never, comment. Yeah. i'm like wow i'm like yeah. so you can't take offense to that stuff no oh it's crazy yeah, i you, always say to myself the same thing i'm like how bad does their life have to be joe rogan talked about that joe rogan's like he's like dude you know those comments people put on fucking youtube and they try to tear you down he goes that's like the bottom of the bottom of humanity Yep. He's like, you can't get any lower than that. He goes, he goes, it must be the worst place to be, the cesspool of misery at the bottom of people. Like, yeah, people yeah. people yeah, hang you out on YouTube all day long and be like, ah, you look problem. like shit, you know? Yeah, YouTube comments are even worse because you don't see a profile pic. You don't see anything, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So yeah. the YouTube comments are just the worst. 